Hello everyone, let us start the probability theory for data science. Let us go through the objective. The objective is to introduce the core principles of probability theory and fundamental of statistical techniques and to demonstrate methods for solving practical probability problems and statistical applications. Not limited to that, we will learn many numerical examples along with the theory in probability. We will follow some of these textbooks, a first course in probability by Ross. You may follow any other books also. There are many references here I have given. Kai Lai Chung, Elementary Probability Theory with uh, Stochastic Process and uh, Fundamental of Applied Probability Theory by Drake, A. Drake, Advanced Engineering Mathematics, Crazy. Some of these slides or most of the slides you can see that I have already uh, I have uh, taken uh, this uh, information from this sums outline of theory and problems of probability. In this book you will see that many workout examples are there and uh, the notes the sequence I have followed from these books by HCSU HP and uh, this is uh, named this uh, sums outline of theory and probability problems of probability random variables and random processes mc grohill 1997 so uh, many slides i have uh, followed the sequence of this book so you can follow up these books also so if you want to go through more details you can follow some other textbooks i have also taken many numerical examples from this book fundamental of mathematical statistics by sultan chand and sons by S.C. Gupta and V.K. Kapoor. So, there are many workout numerical examples. So, I have also taken many numerical examples from these books. In these slides, you will see. So, what we will learn here? The syllabus it is given. Uh, the probability, we will start with probability, probability models and assume conditioning and Bayes theorem. Also, conditional probability will learn Bayes theorem, independence, discrete random variables and probability mass functions. Uh, for discrete random variable, we will learn expectation examples, multiple random variable also we will learn for discrete random variable. For continuous case, we will learn the probability density functions and how independence of random variables it will be defined for continuous random variable and discrete random variable we will discuss and their expectation examples, multiple continuous random variable also we will learn and then we will learn the continuous uh, random variable uh, transformation of random variables and covariance correlation between the random variables also we will learn the convolution then we will finally we will uh, learn the notion of convergence we law of large number central limit theorem so basically my plan is to go very slow so that uh, if you are very new to this topic suppose uh, you may be expert some other field but you want to learn this topic and you are not uh, as uh, good uh, in this topic uh, because you don't have any background don't worry if you uh, see the videos in the lecture uh, my plan is to go very slow and also with uh, many numerical examples here many numerical examples for every topic whenever we discussed definitions concepts theories whatever then uh, there are some numerical examples we discussed so that everybody can understand uh, very clearly and uh, it is very elementary level very slow i have discussed uh, most of the topics i want to discuss so that is the uh, goal here so uh, we'll go in this way let's uh, start the enjoy the course let us discuss what is phenomena so basically uh, just we want to relate uh, this course to our nature for we in the surroundings we always see or we always observe we uh, come across uh, those things so phenomena refer to a fact occurrence or circumstance that can be observed or is observable this is a phenomena for example you know that natural phenomena uh, include uh, weather patterns fox thunder tornadoes so uh, many uh, more things so these are the phenomena so now this phenomena can be classified into two type one is called non deterministic phenomena another is called deterministic phenomena so what is deterministic phenomena and what is non deterministic phenomena so uh, deterministic phenomena is the phenomena 
that there is a uh, model we assume. So, whatever phenomena it is happening surroundings us, we assume that there may be some functional relationship. So, that is uh, we say that it is a model. So, like uh, there is some cause, so this some x, it is an independent variable and there is some effect, some y. So, this is the something is happening, some model is there. But this model may or may not be known to us. If the model is known to us uh, and we can perfectly uh, predict it by giving the x values, the y we known, known to us, it, it is know, y values are known to us given the values of x. So, then it is called a deterministic phenomena. So, there are many examples in physics and chemistry uh, such deterministic phenomena. Basically, exact sciences we try to find that model or function. For example, Boyle's law, Charles law. Uh, there is no ambiguity that uh, there may be many possibilities. So, if uh, this law says that under certain conditions, if some conditions are satisfied, then this output will be that. So, that is the uh, exact sciences. So, in mathematics, mathematics also a exact science. So, one problem is that suppose we are predicting in the future. So, mostly future prediction, rainfall prediction, we do not have any model. But in a bank, suppose you keep some money and you know the interests and after two years you know that what will be the value uh, what will be the final value so so consider the predicting the amount of money in a bank account so if you know the initial deposit and the interest rate you can accurately determine the account balance after one year so that is called a exact prediction so that means you know this function so this function may be some uh, some x into plus some rx uh, by 100. So, some function. So, if you know the x, then your y is your perfectly you know that. This is called the uh, deterministic phenomena if you have this kind of model. But unfortunately, many uh, natural phenomena, for example, if you just toss a coin, simple, just toss a coin, and then you cannot say that it will be head and tail. So, even uh, so, uh, natural phenomena like rainfall. So, if you ask that tomorrow, uh, whether there will be rainfall and uh, how much rainfall it will be if it is there. So, we can say some percentage. Why, why we say this percentage? Because we, we do not have some function that exactly if you give this some of the independent variable like it may be dependent on humidity, it may be uh, dependent on that particular day, it may be dependent maximum temperature, minimum temperature and if you have some function like this and you know that either it is yes or no or it may be how much rainfall it is then if you give these values, then we can say exactly, but we do not have this model. So, then we know that, it, it, we say that it is a non-deterministic phenomena. So, non-deterministic phenomena is that there is no mathematical model that enables perfect prediction of a phenomena's outcome. This phenomena can be divided into two groups. So, non-deterministic phenomena is divided into two groups. One is called random phenomena, another is called haphazard phenomena. So, so basically, uh, classification of phenomena, one is non-deterministic, one is deterministic we discussed and non-deterministic we cannot uh, have, we do not have model, but it can be classified into two parts. One is called random phenomena, another is called the haphazard phenomena. So, phenomena can be classified into two parts, one is non-deterministic phenomena, another is deterministic phenomena and deterministic phenomena we have discussed, non-deterministic phenomena can be classified into two parts. Again, it is random phenomena and haphazard phenomena. So, non-deterministic phenomena means we do not have any model to perfect prediction. And deterministic phenomena is that we have the model to perfectly predict it. But this, even if you do not have the perfect prediction, there also we can classify into random and haphazard. So, let us discuss how, so basically, if we solve this phenomena, actually, this is classified into one part is deterministic and, and another is uh, non-deterministic, non-deterministic. Again, non-deterministic part is classified into two non-deterministic, two part, one is called random phenomena. So, we can write like this, non-deterministic. this is random phenomena and another is called uh, haphazard phenomena. 
So, what is those uh, non deterministic phenomena we can classify? So, random phenomena is that this is while individual outcome cannot be predicted in the long term, results exhibit statistical regularity. Basically, this phenomena we do not have any model. Suppose if you are doing a random phenomena, so on phenomena, uh, so whenever we sometimes we uh, do uh, repeat this. So, here note that we are considering phenomena whenever we are repeating in the experiment also for a in our laboratory. Uh, suppose you are tossing the coin, so that is also a phenomena. We say that it is a random phenomena, sometimes we say random experiment also. So, for each run, we do not have any uh, we do not have any model to predict it, but in a long run, there may be a, some statistical regularity. For example, if you throw a die, so there are six faces 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then each time we do not know that what will it will appear. But if we say that after 1000 number of times, how many times one will appear? Because if you uh, know that it is a fair die, all are equally likely of the site, then number of times the one should appear 1 by 6 into 1000 whenever it is long run. So, that is a called a statistical regularity. So, although the outcome uh, of the single role uh, is unpredictable over many roles, each number will appear approximately 1 6 of the times. So, this regularity is due to the symmetry of a pair die where each side is equally likely uh, to occur. So, but what is then haphazard phenomena? So, haphazard phenomena, so haphazard phenomena in the case of outcome are unpredictable and do not exhibit statistical regularity over the log run also. So, haphazard phenomena is that, so it is sim it is also a uh, non-deterministic phenomena, each run we cannot predict anything even if after 1000 or 10,000 number of time you do not have any pattern or statistical regularity. So, what are the those examples? So, for example, uh, instead of throwing a die, you consider that uh, somebody uh, sitting uh, beside the room uh, and I just we just ask the you say some number from 1 to 6 and this person whatever it is saying the number we are taking as a outcome of the experiment. So, then uh, whether after 1000 number of times, we can we say that how many uh, one it will appear or maybe after 10,000 number of times because we do not know uh, that uh, this person how uh, uh, he can select this number. Is there any favorite number, any pattern and after 10,000 number of times also he can change his mind. So, uh, it is impossible to predict uh, which number they may choose at any given time. We cannot determine the probability of observing any specific value from 1 to 6. We do not know the person has a favorite number that they choose more frequently. We have no insight into the process by which the person is selecting the numbers. So, this kind of things actually it is known as haphazard phenomena. So, in a deterministic phenomena, all the uh, exact sciences, mathematics, physics, chemistry, so uh, it is studying uh, the finding the exact model for the perfect prediction. But whenever we cannot find the model, either we can leave it or we can find some, uh, if we can get some more information like uh, in the random phenomena. Random phenomena actually, we may not have the perfect model, but uh, at least uh, from uh, statistical regularity, we can have some information from it. So, that is the probability we will learn here. So, but the haphazard phenomena, actually we cannot do anything because there is no such statistical regularity then uh, we cannot actually uh, proceed further uh, with this kind of phenomena mostly we will uh, concentrate on the random phenomena and all possible outcome of a random phenomena it is known as a sample space. So, we need to discuss before defining the probability we need to discuss some of the uh, some uh, definitions so that we will go through now. So, next we will discuss some important definition and of sample space what is events and then we will start uh, defining the probability.